the last night we stayed in the house, that's when it was throwing my children around. Um, we would grab the children and um, we would anoint them with olive oil and claim the blood of Jesus. And we would pray over them praises out of Psalms and um, they would flee. But they would flee. They would get off of the children. The children would, you know, become themselves again. There must be sheer terror or? Yes, um, I was very frightened. Uh, I knew I was up against something supernatural. I knew it wasn't anything of this world. Um, I knew it was only one way to fight it. And that was with God. The last night we was there, it was very violent. Mm -hmm. um, it would. It picked up a lamp from out of my bedroom and threw it into the living room. It was throwing chairs. They were throwing the chairs. Can. Oh yeah, it picked up like air freshener cans, oh. threw the can. Everything was happening all at once. So we grabbed some clothes and grabbed what we could and we ran out of the house. As we was running out of the house, it picked my oldest son up and threw him off the porch. Flipped him over. It flipped him over and threw him off the porch. One of the demons started, his image started coming in and full. Like, we would see them, but we would see, you know, like shadows. the shadows, like the ghostly look of them. Were the shadows, and forgive my ignorance, so if you've never witnessed this, I mean, were the shadows, these sort of shadows on the wall, were these shadows in the center? No, bodies, but like, like as if a person was walking around. So you, they, they felt like they had some substance for their the shadow. Yeah. Shadow. Okay. Yes. So you'd seen those, which sounds yes. horrible. Yes. Presence and, um, to, to experience. Some of my other guests who came by, they saw them as well. Mm -hmm. So it had us. Nobody uh, would come back. No one, house. no friends, no family wanted to come around and. You know, we understood because it was scary. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we felt alone, mm -hmm. um, hurt, lost, and we had no one to depend on but, but the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we stayed strong, kept our faith strong, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we, got, we became so strong that we decided to just fight him. Um, it was it was either do it was do or die. It's either you fight or you die. One time, they she woke up in the middle of the night, maybe like three in the morning, and um, they saw this shadowy figure pacing back and forth in the living room. And I saw one like coming into full image. It was coming out of my closet. I've never seen it like that before. Whenever you would praise God in Latin no reaction but you start condemning the demon you know condemning you know the, the evil spirit you know all of a sudden she's reacting to that demons can actually possess you use you so you can give them souls you know and they make you take your own life you know so i mean it's Factor follow-up segment tonight, last night, we told you about a nine-year-old Indiana boy who apparently was doing some very shocking things, so much so that exorcism was involved. The Indianapolis Star, that state's biggest newspaper, is heavily covering the story, and a captain in the Gary, Indiana police force, Charles Austin, says the situation is credible. That is incredible. Joining us now from Chicago, Father Michael Magino, a Catholic priest who has been dealing with the situation. So, Father, I want to keep this fact-based, what you know, what you saw, what you did. Let's start with the boy. What do you know about yeah. him? Actually, I have never met any of the children. The first time I heard about the incident was when, the, at, just after the boy walked up the wall backwards, um, there was a furor there, uh, people running out, calling for the police, security, the chaplain. He called me. I was in my uh, parish uh, uh, conducting a Bible study core class and I got the call because I was on call for the uh, Catholic priest chaplain who was off at that time. 
and they called me in to do an exorcism. And I okay, said, let's, let, let, well, me stop, let me stop you there. Exorcism is, okay. a, is a very rare and serious thing mm -hmm. that the Catholic yes. Church, and, and you have to go through a lot of hoops to, to get it approved, to get the people in. It disturbs yes. me a little bit that the boy involved, and this is according to the newspaper and other eyewitnesses, you know, was, was doing incredible things like walking up walls and things like that. But mm -hmm. you yourself, yes. you yourself never talked to the boy. Uh, why not? Well, when I went, went to uh, do the interview at the, the home with the mother and the grandmother, I, it was a four-hour interview. And the first uh, two hours were basically just uh, getting information of all the occurrences and phenomena that was surrounding everything leading up to that incident at, at the emergency room in the hospital. The problem I'm having with this is, number one, you didn't see the boy. I think yeah. the, the credibility of the Catholic Church is, is in a tough way now in this country. Exorcism is a very serious thing very very serious mm -hmm. i understand mm -hmm. you got permission from the bishop in your diocese mm -hmm. to do this mm -hmm. but it just seems to me that the story is not solid enough to go public with it and there are a lot of people watching right now that say this is more mumbo jumbo from the roman catholic church and no credibility here at all how would you answer that well, the boys, the two boys and the girl were, one uh, was put into a lockdown psychological children's um, ward, and the other two were taken to the Carmelite sisters who take care of foster children. And so they were taken away from the parents and uh, from the mother and the grandmother. And, uh, and so I didn't have access to them. And I discovered in the investigation that the mother was also possessed. Mainly at the end, very end, I put the crucifix on her forehead and she began to convulse. As a Catholic priest for many years, you believe that there is something unworldly involved with this family. You do believe that? Mm -hmm. All right, Father. Yeah, I, I do. I'm going to stop it there, and we appreciate your time Turning very much. Joining us now, the Thank reporter you. with the Indianapolis Star who wrote the initial story and conducted more than a dozen interviews on it. Marissa Kwiatkowski is with me now. Marissa, good to see you. Let me start with this. After all the interviews you did of independent third-party witnesses and so on, do you believe the story? It's not my job to believe or disbelieve the story. I will leave that to others. It's not your job, but what do you think? I'm asking you. I mean, were you persuaded <laughs> at all? It's not my job to be persuaded either way. My job is to report the facts as they were told to me and to let people draw their own conclusions, and I wrote it that way deliberately. Well, let me ask you this. You've got, you've got a police captain saying he believes. You interviewed, did you interview the people who claim to have seen the boy walking backwards up the wall? I interviewed the registered nurse who witnessed or says he witnessed the boy walking backward up the wall. I did not interview the Department of Child Services caseworker. However, I had her report from that incident. And did, did, did she claim to see it as well? She claimed to see it as well, yes. Do you have any reason to doubt their, their accounts? I mean, as a reporter, you always go in skeptical. I think they believe it, yes. Are these, is there any reason that you uncovered to doubt them? In other words, any history of uh, their relationship with the truth, any performance complaints, that kind of thing? Good question. No, there weren't any sorts of situations that gave me pause. People in credible positions doing typical work and, um, you know, nothing to report. How many eyewitnesses were there to the, to the you know, so-called possessed behavior other than the mother? Because, you know, the mother may or may not have had issues. There was a psychologist saying uh, she's got some issues and the kids are basically performing for her. How many people outside of the family who are verifying these accounts? You mean in the hospital or outside of the hospital? Anybody outside of the family. Uh, I would take me a bit of time to count, but at least five or six people who say they witnessed things that were strange. Is there any audio or visual? There are not audio or visual representations of the boy walking up the wall or the levitation. Um, there are photos of things that police saw while they were in the home, but nothing, you know, no demons or paranormal or anything like that. Hmm. 
All right, we'll continue to follow it. Uh, thanks for bringing it to our attention, Marissa. All the best. You too.